Imagine living your life after 50 and feeling energized and excited about your future. Welcome to the Women in the Middle podcast, the podcast for women who are ready to figure out what they want and create the life they deserve. Here's your host and master certified life coach, Susie Rosenstein. Hey there, welcome back to the podcast, Women in the Middle. I'm your host, Susie Rosenstein, and I'm so glad to be here with you again for this week's episode, which is all about finding your midlife fashion. We're going to be talking about actually thinking about the way you look and dress in midlife. Today, we're talking specifically about what you put on your body and why the why part's so interesting. Did you pause and reflect on what you're wearing right now? I bet you did. That's what I'm hoping for anyway, because fashion is something that affects everybody, even if you don't care that much about it. But first, a question for you. Have you joined my free Facebook group yet? I'm not sure if you know that it's a place to go to continue this podcast conversation. It's called the Women in the Middle Community, and it's where we keep talking about what we're talking about in here, basically how to love your life after 50. So if you're not in there with us, just go to www.facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash women in the middle community. Click join. That's it. It's simple. And I can't wait to welcome you into the group. All right. I'm excited to get going. But first, I have a wee little rant to share with you, if you don't mind. I'm usually a glass is half full type of gal, but I was pretty annoyed yesterday and I wanted to share what happened because it is relevant. So I just got back from Dallas, Texas. It was a whirlwind of a few days, chock full of air travel shenanigans and weather-related delays. Basically, getting from Toronto to Dallas ended up being a 12-hour odyssey when it was only supposed to be three hours. It included being rerouted back to Ohio after almost getting to Dallas. This was all because of mechanical problems in Toronto and some weird ice in Dallas. And then on the way home, the flight was great. And my seatmate seemed nice, but we ended up having to arm wrestle over the armrest the whole flight. (laughs) Do you know what I mean? So I was in the window seat and he was in the middle. He claimed both armrests immediately and I got so pissed off. I was trying to work on my computer and there was absolutely no way for me to use my left hand because I couldn't position my elbow at all in a way that I could type. He was totally hogging up the armrest and he had his headset on and he was engrossed or pretending to be engrossed in a movie. And he didn't seem like he noticed my frustration at all, or at least that's what I was thinking. Of course, I didn't talk to him directly about any of this. (laughs) So I sat there being incredibly annoyed and I, I think even angry. I was angry. And I saw myself thinking, who does this guy think he is? Does he know he just can't take the armrest like this? Does he care? Is he treating me this way because I'm a woman? Can he see I'm trying to work? Oh my God, my head went nuts and so on, right? And I realized that I didn't want to be in this headspace. I had just had an amazing weekend and the plane ride was going to be so much better than the one before on the way down to Dallas because it was already smooth, right? Nothing was going wrong until this little wrestling match about the armrests. So... I knew what I had to do. I had to get to work on my mind. I did not want to be grouchy, but I was grouchy. (laughs) I had to work on my thinking. And I actually saw myself creating major grouchiness for myself. Like I saw myself doing this to myself. And I knew that if I wanted to feel differently on this flight, I had to change my thinking. So I came up with a new thought. It was very simple. This will be fine. So I get, I, I just practiced it. This will be fine. This will be fine this will be fine. You know, remember, he's like inches from me. (laughs) I'm seething. This will be fine. This will be fine. And you know what? I calmed down. It totally was fine. And then I saw the humor in the whole thing. So um, I just went about my business and I was almost immediately calm. And then after a few hours, it happened. He went to the bathroom. So you know what I did, right? (laughs) I grabbed the armrest and got similarly engrossed in what I was doing. (laughs) How old am I? I felt so immature, but I could not resist. So it was fine. He went to the bathroom, and I got the armrest. And then I pretended not to notice anything about him when he returned. So 
So what I wanted to talk to you about was this ability to watch myself think. And you can do this too. You can watch yourself think. And this is related to our topic today and most of our topics. It's the key to regret-proofing your life and having more fun in your 50s and actually any age. Now, I have a, a great little worksheet to help you do this. So if you're interested in it, just go to bit.ly, B-I-T dot L-Y forward slash midlife thoughts, and you can grab it there. And I'll also post a link in the show notes. All right, today we're talking about what you're putting on your body, how you're dressing your body, how you're dealing with midlife fashion or not dealing with midlife fashion. So let's get going. Fashion in your 50s or lack of fashion in your 50s? Which is it for you? You know me, I love to start with a definition. So here's what Wikipedia says about fashion. Fashion is a popular style, especially in clothing, footwear, lifestyle, accessories, makeup, hairstyle, and body. Fashion is a distinctive and often constant trend in the style in which people present themselves. Now that's really how I've been thinking about it too in my 50 Unplugged Mastermind. I'm pretty excited about the work we're doing in there. It's all about becoming bold and brave while you figure out exactly how you're gonna get excited about your life again. It's about unplugging what you think you can't do and plugging in to what you can do. We're spending the whole month on the importance of what I call heating up your body. And like the definition, we're focusing on clothes, but not all clothes, hairstyle, but not all hair, not just hair, makeup, but not just makeup, accessories, but not just accessories. We're talking about all of it, just like the definition. Now, it is about plugging in to thinking about how you want to look. That's really what I want to talk about today. Now, don't get me wrong. It's not about being fancy. It's not about using a special eye cream or looking a certain way or spending a lot of money. But it is about plugging in to thinking about how you want to look and what you want to use on your body on purpose and how this is typically just another area in your life where you are functioning on autopilot for N-A-R, no apparent reason. It's super important to take a look at this for yourself as well. So let's start with the most obvious thing of all, your basic everyday wardrobe. Now, fashion has had a profound impact on human culture. Even if you don't care much about fashion, it's hard not to appreciate this. The scope of the industry, the impact on you over the years, and when you first noticed fashion, how you spent your allowance on fashion, and what it means to you now. Now, even if you're not a fashionista, you're probably a person who cares a bit about what your sneakers look like and not just how much they support your feet. And even if you don't subscribe to Vogue, you probably care a bit about having an amazing pair of jeans that are not only comfortable, but also make your butt look great. And even if you don't have super expensive athletic wear for your yoga class, you may just care a teeny weeny bit how you look and not just how you feel when you're stretching on the mat. See what I mean? When you love what you're wearing, you feel great. And I just had a flashback of something that happened in the 80s. I had this amazing navy jacket that had white trim. And when I wore that, I felt amazing because I thought it made me look amazing. And one time I was in the public subway and I walked through a turnstile and a total stranger said, you look great. And I I must have been projecting how amazing I felt. Now, it's the opposite when you don't love what you're wearing. You might feel all kinds of negative things like sad or dowdy, fat or frumpy, uncomfortable, old, maybe even not cool. And then the bigger picture is that it's another part of your life that's often on autopilot. Now, you may recall we took a deep dive into the whole crappy underwear topic, no pun intended, in episode six of the Women in the Middle podcast. So if you're listening right now, and know all too well that your panties are pathetic, then make sure to listen to that episode again because it's related and important. You deserve more, and this area needs attention too, my friend, for sure. The thing is that regret-proofing your life means ditching autopilot decision-making as much as possible and using your brain and brain science to help you figure out what you want and then do what you need to make it happen. Life is too short. For autopilot. 
Just because it's in your drawer doesn't mean you have to wear it. Just because you've always done it and worn it a certain way doesn't mean you have to continue doing it that way. So ask yourself, do I wear the kinds of clothes I really want to wear? Do I wear clothes I don't like? Am I wearing a lot of older clothes? Do I usually go for clothes that are extremely comfortable versus clothes that are a bit more stylish? So what came up for you when I asked those questions? If you have mostly yeses, then as a woman in the middle, I would suggest that this area in your life needs some work. (laughs) And what's so important when you're digging around in your life is to start asking yourself the question why more often. It's an amazing, an important three-letter word, and we rarely use it on ourselves. So ask yourself these questions. Why am I dressing this way? Why do I make choices to look this way? Am I making decisions based on things I really like or on things I have in my closet or drawers? Do I look this way because I don't know how to shop? Do I look this way because it's all I can afford? Really think about it. The answer to the question is a thought. Every day, you're making a ton of mini decisions that affect how you feel. Do you like your reasons for these decisions? Really think about it and then check in with yourself about what you want instead. Now, this may be the part of the episode today where we're going into unfamiliar territory. So ask yourself this, do you have the style that you want to have now at your age? Do you know what looks good on you? Think broadly, not just about your clothes. Also think about your bras, your bathing suit, your cover-up, your shoes, your jewelry, your jackets, your boots, your purse, your makeup, your nails, your athletic wear, your hairstyle. See what I mean? Lots of opportunities to make fashion decisions, even small ones. So here's what I hear from amazing women in the middle, from clients and women in my Facebook group. It's hard for me to spend money when what I have already works just fine. Yes. I've had it for 15 years, but it still fits. I would like to make a change, but I don't know where to shop. I have no clue what the styles are these days. I have to tell you, that last one is me. So if you like these reasons for making decisions, then it's fine. But if you don't, then you really have to think about what you're doing and how what you're deciding to wear makes you feel. Now, it's funny, I've noticed that some of my friends with daughters seem to have more of a fashion clue, and I wonder if the daughters are pushing it, or if they're trying harder, or maybe it just runs in the family. I think because I've had boys, I just got out of it. Um, And I've noticed that their girlfriends and, and friends who are girls, like the girls in their lives seem to have more of a sense. They're definitely influencing my sons. And I I do have a couple of friends who just notice things more than I do. One friend noticed when bangs were going out of style, and I was completely oblivious. So it's just that type of thing. I am just not that aware of it. So if it's something I think is important, or if I want to make a change, I need to make it a priority, just like you. So you really can be intentional about fashion, too, even if you're not fancy or want to spend a lot of money. You just have to be intentional. And that's the point. So let's start with your jeans. I don't know about you, but there's a lot of talk about jeans these days. There's blogs about jeans and options for jeans, way more than when we were kids and we wore Levi's. There are also many jokes about women in the middle wearing mom jeans, which is a pretty derogatory way to talk about us not looking that great or fashionable in our jeans. So what about you? Do you wear mom jeans? Do you wear jeans at all? Or are you living in yoga pants? (laughs) Now, I've done a whole episode on that, so if you want to hear it, it's called How Yoga Pants Help You Hide, and it's episode 38. And I am well aware of the whole yoga pant thing, and I think you know what I mean, too. Now, back to the jeans. Do you like wearing your jeans? Do they make you look good? Are they comfortable? Do you know where to shop for jeans? I have no clue. And this is just one example of wardrobe staple that you probably haven't purchased with much intention. Now, you can if you want to. If it's important to you, you can prioritize it. You can look less schleppy if you decide that that's what you want to do. It's the same thing with your coat. Does it just keep you warm or is it also flattering? You can have both if you decide you want to prioritize it. 
Maybe you have a lot of black in your wardrobe and you don't wear anything but black. Maybe you want a little more color. That won't happen by accident. You will have to prioritize it. What about your shoes? Do you have the most amazing shoes for what you're doing? If you're a dog walker, do you invest in the best shoes for the heavy use that you have with your job? If you're commuting and have to walk a lot, do you have the perfect footwear for this situation? Perfect is totally subjective and up to you. It could be about what it looks like or how it performs, but the idea is to think about what you want. Now, I'm not saying it's never okay to go with function over form. You can totally do that. And I do that with my Sorel boots. When it's cold, like freakishly cold, and I have to be outside for a while, I don't mind wearing clunky, huge boots. Not particularly gorgeous, but totally function, right? The function is essential. And I'm very happy to clunk around in those big, giant boots. But after that, Like, that's not appropriate for every situation, right? But I've chosen to wear them and to look clunky and be as warm as I can be. This is very different than continuing to wear jeans from 15 years ago that are definitely out of style and don't make your butt look that good. Now, this begs the question, though, do you even know what is in style? This is pretty much my situation. I'm not that clued in. So what do you do? If you decide that you want to be a little more stylish and find your midlife fashion, then you can absolutely do it. And it's not that hard. You can buy a magazine. You can go to the mall instead of shopping online. You can actually talk to a salesperson and get some help and try on all kinds of different things and ask her what's in style. You can follow a fashion blogger or somebody on Instagram like an influencer. Fashion for midlife women is totally a thing now. And there are amazing women talking about it and posting gorgeous pics with simple ideas. Just Google Midlife Fashion Blogger or Midlife Fashion Instagram, something like that, and a ton of links will show up. The thing is, when you think something like, I just don't know where to start, or I have no clue what looks good on me anymore, it's easy to feel overwhelmed and just give up. But you're resourceful, and I bet if you had to compare points cards, for example, or figure out what the best flight is for a family trip, you could totally do it. And if you want to kick up your fashion sense, just a little wee bit, I know you can do that too. Now, don't ignore your bra and underwear situation. You need a good base after all. It helps with bumps and lumps and lines. And it's highly likely you haven't put these on your priority list lately either. I've seen what's going on in that underwear drawer. (laughs) But seriously, you can do this if you want. You can dress a bit more fashionably if you want. You can look a bit better in your work clothes if you want. So if you want to, you can make a change. You are just one thought away from deciding that you deserve to adorn your beautiful body the way that you want to. That's it for this episode. I hope I gave you some food for thought, some different ways to think about fashion and the way you look. Like everything, your thoughts can get in the way when they're unsupervised. Once you see what's going on up there, you have so much more control in your life. So what about you? Do you have what you want? Or are you feeling frustrated and stuck yourself more so than ever before? You might just be ready to make a change. I want you to have more fun and be excited about your life. So if this is you, just go to www.talktosuzy.com, book your free consult call because I am accepting applications to work together right now. Let's see if we're a good fit and we will take it from there. If you like what you've heard on today's episode, just head over to the Women in the Middle podcast on iTunes and leave me a review. A five-star review would be amazing. I totally appreciate the time it takes to do this, but it really does help other women find the podcast and this amazing community too. Check out the show notes with more information and links at my website at www.susierosenstein.com. Don't forget to join more of the podcast conversation in my free Facebook group at www.facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash women in the middle community. Let's do this, ladies, one thought at a time. Thanks so much for listening. 